Hi, welcome to question eight, 2014, paper one, uh, ordinary level. So uh, as always, I suggest you pause and try each part of the question um, before we um, actually do it on the video. So I'll start part A now. The length of the side of a square sheet of cardboard is 12 centimeters. Find the area of the sheet. So the length of the side, okay, of a square, should cover is 12 centimeters, find the area of the sheet. So I would suggest to try to draw this to get your head around the scenario. So it's a square sheet of cardboard. That's supposed to be a square. Okay. If it's a square, every side around is 12 centimeters. Okay. Now, that's what's going on. We've been asked now to find the area. Okay. So I'll go to the answer. Area of a square is length by length. Now it's the same thing as length by breadth, but that's for a rectangle, so two lengths are the same. Sometimes in different questions that might be useful to think of it like this. Area is equal to L squared. It doesn't matter in this question, but that sometimes is the trick. So the each length is 12 times 12, which gives you 144. Four. And very important, the units are centimeters and they're squared, because it's an area. That's part A, five marks. Okay. Now we have... Um, the diagram below shows a square sheet of cardboard of side length 12 centimeters. Okay, so it's the same scenario here. The whole length is 12, from which four small squares, each of side H, so that's H all the way around, okay, have been removed. So it's the final H down there. This sheet can be folded to form an open rectangular box of height H. So if these corners fold up, you'll have a little box uh, height h, um, width 12, I suppose, length uh, 12. So now we're looking anymore to be a uh, volume potentially is something's going to be asked here. Now this question is actually asking you to find, uh, write the length and the width of the box in terms of h. Okay, so you have a section for length of box and width of box. And if you think about it, if you can imagine it, okay, when this folds up, okay, the length of this smaller uh, rectangular box, okay, is going to be 12, take away H, take away H, okay, so the sides here folding up. Do the same thing down the other side, and this other the side here folds up, and the side here folds up, it's going to be 12, take away 2H, okay. So here's the answer, the same thing for both. Hopefully that makes sense, okay. If not, have a think about it. With and to do with shapes, if you can visualize it yourself, it makes the question so much easier. Okay, now we're talking here in terms of algebra. We don't know what H is, but I'm assuming at some stage we're going to have to calculate that. Let's go to C. Now, okay, part C says show the volume of the box uh, in terms of H is this. So they give you the answer. You just have to go ahead and find the volume. Okay, I'm going to use the answer to put in. So the volume box is length by breadth by width. Okay, they see all three sides by each other. So the length is 12 minus 2h, the breadth is 12 minus 2h, and the height there is h. If you want to play those three things together, okay, you know, it's, it's a triple multiplication. I suggest doing these two brackets first. Okay, you're going to end up with, let's just do it actually for the practice, 144. Okay, uh, 12 minus 2h is minus 24h. Okay, so I'm doing the second multiplication. Then the minus 2h by 12 is minus 24h again. Okay, and then minus 2h by minus 2h. Minus and minus is a plus, 2 twos is 4h by h is h squared. Okay, you're then multiplying that, f that answer there by h. Okay, to do the final multiplication step. And you'll see that the answer uh, you get is the same as the answer you were given. Okay. Now part D. Okay, it's a ten marker. That's ten D scale, so there's five breakups. Find the value of H, which gives the maximum volume of the box. Now, maximum volume, okay, uh, is going to involve most likely differentiation. Okay. So if you graph this, sometimes you can graph. As the height changes, the volume you know goes in a quadratic fashion. Okay, so that's the equation given. The volume is given by that function. So it's cubic function. It's power three. It's third order. 
polynomial, and we'd often say cubic equation. When you differentiate the equation, it drops down to the lower equation, so it's the answer here, when you differentiate, it's going to be quadratic. Okay, and at the maximum point, okay, so if it was looking like this, at the maximum point, the slope is zero. And we've already had a maximum in question in paper one, 2014. <clears throat> so if I differentiate this, I'm going to get the change in volume with the change in the height. Okay, it's given by this new function. Now I've achieved this by differentiating uh, the top thing. So if we differentiate 4h to the power of 3, you multiply the power by a number in front, take 1 from the power. So 3 fourths is 12, 3 take away 1 is 2. So I get 12h squared. Differentiate the second term here, power by number in front. So 2 times minus 48 is minus 96. Take 1 from the power of 2, take away 1 is 1. Okay, she should put it up here. Uh, if you differentiate a term with just a variable, so 144h, four, four if you differentiate it, you end up dropping the h. It actually turns to 1, uh, but that's us not look into that. Uh, you get 144, four, and that's what reflected down here. So now I have a quadratic, okay, and that function or the equation, if you take the one here, 12h squared, whatever, is equal to the change in volume with respect to change in, in uh, h. Okay, this, that's the other way of saying the slope you know at the maximum point the slope is zero. So I can swap that term for, for zero. Now I have an equation of one unknown as a quadratic equation, so I have to solve it. What I've done here is I've simplified it by dividing it all the way across by 12. So 12 into 12 goes once, 12 to nine, minus 96 goes minus eight times, 12 into 144 goes 12 times. That's the quadratic and I can, I can solve it using the fast method. I'm looking for what two numbers multiply to give 12 and add to give minus eight. Okay, now in this case I've gone, um, what should work is, okay, minus 6 by minus 2, okay. Now you could list all the factors, but this is pretty obvious when it's something like this. Um, they're going to multiply to give plus 12, and they're going to add to give minus 6, minus 2. It's going to add to give minus 8. So those two numbers work. Put them in, that's the factors. Now the value of the factors is, um, h minus 6 equals 0, so h is equal to 6, or h minus 2 is equal to 0, therefore h is equal to 2. Um, I'm looking for the, let's see now, the largest value, okay, find the value of h which gives the maximum volume of the box, so I'm looking here to give, uh, for h is equal to 2 is the answer. Okay, now I think I've tested that by putting the 2 and the 6 in, to the original equation, okay, and two gives the largest volume, therefore it's the one you pick. So I just haven't reflected that here for some reason. Okay, now part E says find the maximum volume of the box. Okay, so I go ahead here and actually, I'm actually doing that stage here, putting the two in and finding the actual volume. Okay. What I did was, or the alternative would be to actually use the original volume equals length by breadth by height and swap the two in there, okay? Either way, it's um, equally valid. I hope that makes sense now, okay? Now, that's question eight. Okay, so um, again, I pause and we'll go back over that. It's pretty technical. Do maximums twice in one paper, which is interesting. Um, do the differentiation in there and make sure you understand how to do the process of differentiation. And I'll stop there for now and say, uh, have a good night. Thank you.